I'm back today with an art journal page and this one is a little different to my usual style. I wanted to try something out and I hope that you'll join me in this journey. I've been asked a few times for some ideas for using the Derwent uh, ink tense blocks so today all the colour is from those blocks and I have to admit I don't think I've used them like this in a page all on their own I've used them in little bits and here and there but not for a whole page where I'm just using them for the colour so this will be fun to try out but before I get into the different ways I've used them I just want to say a massive thank you for all of your support when I said like a couple of videos ago that I'm going to have to change up my schedule a bit you guys you're amazing thank you so much for being patient with the changes and I know it's going to be a little bit fluid for the next few months so I am recording this today during the day hopefully we'll be able to get most of it done without too much building noise in the background and I'm sorry if the mic does pick up some bits here and there now I'm working on a page in my junk journal and I've chosen this page for a reason which I'll go into a little later in the video but let's first get into the art. So I had some torn up bits of journaling cards from a project that I'm doing for my patrons over at Patreon. Big wave to you guys! And well, you know me, I, I have a total inability to throw away any little bits of paper. <laughs> you saw my whale, didn't you? So these ones, I'm sticking them down with some matte medium. Now, I usually use gloss regular gel for this kind of work. But as I knew I was going to use ink tense blocks on this page, I decided to go for matte medium instead. The gloss would be just, well, just a little bit too glossy and a little bit too slick for the look that I wanted to get with the ink tense. But do try it out on both surfaces. Don't feel that you have to use matte medium or whichever, it doesn't matter. Just my general rule of thumb is just try it out and you never know what kind of looks you're going to get or what kind of effects you're going to discover. And art journaling is all about taking risks and discovering new things, so kind of go for it. But in this case, I am going to use matte because I do want a little less of the gloss. Once I had some strips secured to the page and it was dry, I then decided to knock it back a little bit, you know, the text on the page. And I'm using white acrylic paint for this. Again, use gesso if you prefer to use gesso. Okay, let's get at it with the ink tense blocks and application technique number one, which is direct to project. These blocks are great for just scribbling onto paper with. They are a little delicate and can snap into smaller pieces, so do be a little bit careful about that. But otherwise, you can get some nice and expressive marks with them. And you can use the tips, the edges, the sides, whatever you like. For this piece, I'm going to scribble them onto the page, then pull that colour out with a brush and some water. So that's also application technique number two, the pulling it out with the water. Ink tents are an okay dry medium, but they are really designed to react strongly and intensely with water, so add some water for the colour to just really pop. Don't be afraid to add them to wet parts of the page too. So application technique number three. And it's a great way to get some really intense mark making with them. For application technique number four, I'm going to take the colour directly from the block. Now this is one of my favourite techniques and is a great way to add some really intense colour to an area. And all you really need to do is use a wet brush to pick up the colour from the block. 
and you might have to work it a little bit to, to get that colour moving on the block. Now for this next one, I've used the block to draw on the page, but you can bring that mark out by adding water just to the marks. So application number five is more of a focused use of water. You don't really want to flood that area with water, so experiment a little bit to work out exactly how much water you need to be able to sort of put the water on your marks, but not have it flowing all over your page. And of course you can still pull out the colour <laughs> from the marks as well. So you kind of can mix and match your techniques as you go. Next is another favourite technique of mine and that's application number six, which is using a wet ink tense block. Now this time what we're going to do is wet the block and then use the block to mark the page. And this just gives a lovely, intense, expressive mark. So try it out with some big and longer marks as well. And the wet part on the block might need re-wetting quite frequently, but you can get some really fun visual textures where that wet part gives way to the dry application as you move it across the paper. And you'll spot this a little bit later when we did a close-up. Have a look out for where these marks kind of look more creamy, which is where the block was wet when I put it on the page, and other areas where they kind of look a bit more crumbly, where the block was actually dry when it went on the page. So, six application techniques on one little page. Not bad. We managed to cram quite a lot in there, didn't we? But I'm sure you could cram in some more. Now whilst I finish off with some little details on this page, let me just share with you why this one kind of jumped out at me today and why I'm using this page, as I kind of have a personal connection to it, other than making it, that is. Now I don't know if you recognise the object in the picture, it's a little known London site. So even if you were born and bred a Londoner, you may not know this site. Well, particularly now as it's no longer there. Behind that ornate grate is the remains of the London Stone, a piece of limestone that no one really knows where or how it got there or even why. Although I think the current theory is that the Romans transported it to London from another part of the UK for using in building. Now it's a really odd little thing as it used to sit behind this grate that you can see in the photo on Cannon Street and you could peek through at it but you could easily have walked past it completely and not even noticed that it was there. I mean, you kind of had to first notice it, then physically drop a little to be able to see through the grate as it was on ground level. Now, I remember stumbling across it completely by accident, not even realising it was there. And because I'm a curious kind of person, I was completely enthralled by this odd little alcove that was both completely overstated for a piece of old stone and understated for a piece of history. And there wasn't really a lot of information about it on site. And there was a plaque there with the name and a tiny bit of its history, but I, I honestly I can't remember the plaque, I just really remember the grate and the stone. And I also remember that it was pretty surreal because you're on a busy London street in the middle of the city crouched down peering through a grate at an old piece of stone that someone wanted to keep but wasn't quite sure why it was important perhaps? I don't know. And, and that's kind of what London is like to me. It, it's just full of these little odd features. Well, I suppose most places are, but when you live there you kind of don't notice them, do you? And I kind of like the fact that this little piece of limestone has just built up loads of myths around it over, you know, decades and centuries of it being around. Some people thought it was a druid altar, and then there's another myth that if it's moved, London will fall. We, we humans kind of like to fill in the gaps of our knowledge with stories, don't we? 
Well, the London Stone has now been moved, so that whole area is under development, so it's no longer there. And I don't even know if they've kept the 1960s grate that it sat behind. I kind of hope so, but I don't know, maybe it's gone. The stone itself is now in the London Museum behind some glass, and I think it's there temporarily, so maybe it's going to go back to Cannon Street, I don't know. And if you want to visit it, then you'll find it in the London Museum and also you can do an online search and it'll fill you in with a load more details than I can possibly fill you in with. I really should go and see the stone again. I do feel strangely connected to it though, like it was my own little discovery that day and I literally stumbled upon it on Cannon Street. And I suppose that's why I made this page, to remember that. Uh, I don't often do memory journaling, I do little bits but not like loads and I haven't often shared any of that kind of thing here so I don't even do sort of emotional journaling but and spilling and things like that but you know maybe maybe I should maybe I should do more of that look out for all the different textures that we got from those ink tense blocks as we do the close-up flyby and here are some more videos to watch on YouTube if you are looking for some more inspiration. And do come and join me on Patreon too. We have just started the August Art Challenge over there and it's really fun seeing what my arty patrons are doing with the theme this month. Right, I will catch up with you soon and yeah, have a wonderful creative time until then.